Hi there. Hi. Hi there. I'm just going to clean my hands first. Okay. Hi, I'm BJ Daniels, and I've been asked to examine you for something called COPD. Uh, what is your name? Colin. Colin. Nice to meet you. So starting the exam for COPD, I'm going to be starting with general appearance, looking at Colin's overall well-being, looking specifically, given this is stable COPD and we're thinking this is more of an outpatient setting, I'm not expecting him to have an exacerbation, and just examining him to see, even with advanced COPD, if he might be have a little increased work of breathing, and just looking at him, I don't appreciate that. Or, you know, if he was really an extremist, he might be tripoding, leaning forwards, but I don't see that. So overall, he seems comfortable. He's not doing any purse lip breathing, and uh, yeah, just overall looks fairly well. Uh, next, I would normally do vital signs, uh, but I've been asked not to do it. But of course, things that might be abnormal is probably just an increased respirate of all the things. I can't imagine much, much else, except for maybe a decreased oxygen saturation, depending how advanced the COPD is. Obviously, if he's having an acute exacerbation that was infectious, he could have a fever, he could be tachycardic. And in an acute exacerbation, you can actually get a pulses paradoxis. But again, I don't expect any of that. So I'm going to start with the hands. And again, if he was still smoking, you might see tobacco stains, um, but I don't see that. One of the things I would look for in all COPD is that I would not expect is any clubbing. And I'll do maybe a bit more detailed given this. Can you just put your fingers together like this? Good, just looking to see. And I see the nice, normal diamond shape. Uh, so that suggests there isn't any clubbing. And there are a few other tests I could do, but I really don't suspect it. Because if I did see clubbing in a COPD, -er, I'd be more concerned about lung cancer. So moving on from there again, just quick look at the hands, seems normal, um, good peripheral circulation, I don't see any problems with that. If his uh, fingers were blue, he, he might have some cyanosis, some peripheral cyanosis, but I don't appreciate that. So then moving up uh, to his face, just looking at his face, the things I might note is if there was any central cyanosis, and I don't notice that, um, especially if both peripherally and centrally his lips were blue or his buccal mucosa, he might uh, be hypoxemic, but I don't see that. And again, if I hadn't already commented, I would comment on purse lip breathing. Although it's more classic of kids and asthma, you might get some nasal flaring, um, but I don't notice that. So now moving down to his neck, I'm just going to have a look at his neck, and I will disrobe him further later. Uh, looking at his neck, what I want to uh, focus on is his laryngeal height. So if I sort of feel the laryngeal prominence of his thyroid cartilage is way up here, or his sternal notch is way down here, it's clearly way over uh, four centimeters. But if it was less than or equal to four centimeters, then it might be uh, a bit of an issue. Other things in the neck region I should comment on, that I might have commented on in general appearance, is just, is he using his sternocleidomastoids to breathe, kind of sucking in, having any supraclavicular indrawing, and I don't appreciate any of that. So moving on to auscultation here, this is when you, uh, I would do a forced expiratory time. Can I get you to take a deep breath and cough? I find if I do that, he'll clear it out so that if I ask him to do the force respiratory time, he doesn't start coughing while I'm listening over his trachea. So what I'm going to get you to do, and I'll demonstrate it for you, is to take a deep breath and blow it as hard and fast as you can, because this is how you do it. <gasps> Just like that. And I'm going to be listening to you, so don't do it yet, and I'm going to time how long it takes, okay? So, putting stethoscope over, take a deep breath in, and blow. Blow, 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 blow. Good. So that was two seconds, very normal. Certainly over nine seconds is very diagnostic, but even over six starts to be a bit concerning, and less than three is really normal. Uh, so from there, I'm going to actually now, do you mind if I pull down your gown? Go for it. Okay. So as I pull down his gown, I'm just inspecting uh, his anterior chest. I'm looking for like the usual kind of deformities, if he has any pectus uh, problems, but there's nothing there. Um, inspecting from the side, looking for any barrel chested, sort of increased AP diameter, and I don't notice that. Looking for any intercostal indrawing, and I don't appreciate that. And again, if he's using his abdominal muscles to breathe, which I don't notice. So everything looks good on pal on inspection, sorry. And then moving on to palpation, one of the maneuvers we can do is Hoover sign, and by putting his hand on the anterior uh, thoracic cage, sort of at the rib margins, take a deep breath, and out. And one more time, and out. 
and as expected, my hands go out and up like a bucket of a handle as opposed to sucking in. If you had a flattened diaphragm, a positive Hoover's would have my hands sucking in and we don't have that. <coughs> so that's inspection <coughs> and palpation. Um, you can, if you had pain, you could just sort of palpate the bony structures, but again, I don't tend to do that. So I'm going to move on to percussion. And one of the key areas you can get hyper resonance is the right upper anterior chest. That seems normal resonant to me. You should have dullness over the heart. And it is dull, but if we didn't have dullness, decreased cardiac dullness would be a positive finding. And he doesn't have that. Percussion of the chest wouldn't be complete without percussing over the apices just to make sure there was any pathology. And I'll just do a quick now general percussion. And that all sounds normal. Moving on to auscultation. Auscultation of the front or the back will reveal the same things. Um, I don't expect any low bar specific problems, but the key things that I'm going to be listening for is the intensity of the breath sounds because it can be quieter in COPD. <coughs> so take a breath in and out through your mouth. And again. Over the lingula here, and over the right middle lobe here. Other things you can hear is it should be vesicular, which it was. It might have a prolonged expiration, his did not. And you may have wheezes or crackles. Both can be found in COPD, depending on the subtype. So auscultation was completely normal. I'm now going to move to the posterior. I did already comment on barrel chest. The other thing I can inspect from the side is if there's any problems with excessive uh, kyphosis that might suggest a vertebral fracture, and then now inspecting the back. Now with the back on inspection, just seeing does the vertebra seem in line, or is there any uh, scoliosis, which there doesn't appear to be. Better test would have them bend forwards to see if one scapula is higher than the other. We won't do that. And just really looking for any obvious abnormalities, uh, scars from previous surgeries, and I don't appreciate any of that. So after inspection, again, palpation, we can again do uh, chest expansion posteriorly, but anteriorly is better, so I won't do that. Percussion, again, is sort of a quick screen. Although percussing posteriorly is not as useful for the hyperresonance as anteriorly. And again, I don't appreciate anything there. Although on palpation, I could have done tactile fremitus. It really doesn't have a use in COPD because we're not expecting any unilateral problems. And I find tactile fremitus only helpful after a unilateral abnormality in percussion or auscultation. For percussion, you can also percuss the diaphragmatic excursion, but the evidence behind that is quite poor, so I tend not to do that. So now I'll just finish my examination with auscultation posteriorly, commenting on the same things I did anteriorly. Can you put your hands on opposite shoulders, please? And deep breath in and out through your mouth. And he had equal breath, <coughs> equal breath sounds on both sides. Um, again, they were vesicular. There was not prolonged expiration. There were no wheezes or crackles, and they had a normal intensity. And that concludes my examination for COPD.